2023 is looking like it's going to be a very good year when it comes to survival games. Here are 8 survival titles to help you survive 2023. Starting off with The Day Before. This is an MMO, playable as single player, but being an MMO. Also including, of course, an opportunity to co-op or do PvP as you desire. It is planned, not confirmed release, it is planned for March 1st, 2023. In this post-pandemic America, you are fighting both other players, that is, depending on how they escape the PvP mode, you're fighting survivors, and you're fighting infected. Whether these other survivors are strictly human players, or whether you're also looking to fight NPCs, I am currently not sure on. As you can expect, in this game you're going to be looting stuff, making sure that you stay alive, on the bottom left you can see three bars, one indicating temperature, energy, which I take to be food, and liquids. Gotta stay hydrated while you are clearing the place. Interesting about this game is that you also have the opportunity to use vehicles to explore, and these vehicles do look rather good. The game takes place both in the countryside as well as in the city. So, whereas the countryside might offer you easier food supplies, I imagine this city could be the area where it's at when it comes to more firearms and potentially more valuable loot. Based on what I've been seeing about the game so far, it does not seem to include any base building. All the buildings, and especially considering this is an MMO, seem to already be pre-made. So if base building is something you're looking for, this might not be the game for you. Something quite different, yet also in the realm of survival, is Frostpunk 2. Frostpunk 2 places you as the leader of a metropolis in a frozen world. It is a not strictly continuation, but a similar game to Frostpunk 1, yet more ambitious in scale. Interesting about this game is that it's not strictly a city builder in a frozen situation, you are also going to have to make some management choices. In this single player game, you are not going to be fighting other players, but you are in fact fighting the cold. You're fighting, quite literally, the environment, and potentially human nature in order to try to survive this hostile environment. Whereas the previous Frostpunk was very much revolving around coal, Frostpunk 2 is all about oil. Getting it, using it to heat your population, using it to heat your city, and using it to stay alive, one way or another. How you do that is entirely up to you. Next on the list is Derelicts. In this single player slash co-op game, everybody lives on space stations. Humanity had to flee the planet because some radiation event affected the Earth, creating lots of mutated animals and mutated humans. You, however, as a player, are not so lucky, because your space shuttle has crashed on Earth, and now it is up to you to survive here. In order to do that, you'll be doing quite a bit of crafting, gathering of resources, base building, and all the while you're going to be facing and fighting nature. Your enemies can range from hostile animals, hostile mutated animals at that, starvation, and potentially also mutated humans, depending of course on how far you venture out and what you find in your travels. The game seems to be very well crafted when it comes to playing with your friends. Survive together, build together, and make sure that you explore the environment together to make your life a little bit easier as you try to survive this hostile radiated earth. Interesting about this game is that the developer is going for a feeling of being trapped. Whether you'll be able to leave Earth at any point by crafting another space shuttle, I rather doubt. It seems like that would take away from your feeling of being trapped. The eventual game is going to cost very little, respectively, to other games. It's going to be a price tag of $15 to $20. This seems to be a solo project, so we might have to be a little patient with development, but the dev is aiming for a release in 2023. An entirely different survival experience can be found in Ark 2. In this next iteration in the Ark series, you wake up on a primal world. 
dinosaurs are everywhere, but they're not necessarily your enemy, as you're able to tame them, make them work for you, and depending on the type, your skills and gear, you can even ride them. Vin Diesel takes a center stage as this is the main character. This is the character that you are supposedly going to be playing. His daughter is voiced by the same girl who voiced Moana. So there seems to be a lot more immersion, a lot more story than the previous games. Interesting to note is that this game is going to be fully moddable. And this means that you can adjust the experience entirely to how you would want it. Your objective is to both survive the dinosaurs, tame them, and thrive in this not necessarily very friendly, yet beautiful world. The alien environment is going to make it interesting to keep exploring, keep finding new things, and keep progressing with your character. Because there is an elaborate skill and progression system. Important about Arc 2 is that there is an NPC AI faction that also uses dinosaurs. They too are able to tame them, they're able to use them, and they're able to use them against you. So that is a big change relative to the first ARC titles. Much like in the other ARC games, you'll be able to build your own base, but of course you don't have to do that alone. You can do that with your allies in a co-op mode, or potentially raid other players as you play some PvP. From what we know so far, the creature AI has also been updated. Previously, the creatures that you were fighting had a sort of radar. They always knew where you were. Now that is no longer true. You'll be able to use camouflage. You'll be able to try and hide your scent from predators that are coming after you. So the AI is going to be having a bit more of a level playing field relative to the previous game. According to the information about the game, it is also going to have a Souls-like melee combat system. This means you'll be able to do blocks, dodges, combos, staggers, special attacks. The combat is going to be really quite involved. If you feel, however, that running might be the better course of action, then free climbing and parkour are going to help you get out of trouble quickly. When exactly in 2023 ARC 2 is coming out is currently not known, so we'll just have to be patient and wait for more information about the game. Another title that has a lot of promise is Rooted. The exact release date is to be determined, but what we do know is that the game takes place in 2100. Let's hope we don't have to wait that long for actual release. A bacterial weapon has devastated the Earth, leaving a group of survivors and you are one of them. It is up to you to try and survive in any way that you can. This includes base building, crafting and farming. And as you gain more technology, as you gain more stuff, you'll be able to use vehicles, you'll be able to automate tasks, use electricity to make your life on your base a little easier and you'll be developing your workshop, building ever increasingly complex designs. Your enemies in this game are going to be humans and animals, but there is also talk of enemies made of steel. So whether we'll be facing drones, robotics of some sort is currently unknown, but there is a robot slash drone shown in some of the footage. Of course, seeing as this is a survival game and a lot of people were interested, PvP is confirmed to be coming later to this game. Now, interestingly, if you're not that fan of PvP, but you still want to have a bit more of a challenge, you can toggle friendly fire on and off, as you explore both the countryside as well as the city. Seeing as the developers themselves already recommend that you get extra outposts, not just one main base, to make sure you don't have to go all the way back to base, does give the idea that this game has a really large map. Lots to explore, both in the countryside and the city, and this should keep us interested for a long time. Next up is Occupy Mars, and I have to say, I'm a little skeptical about this one. The reason is, it's supposed to come out in 2022. The first trailers are already four years old, and so far, we have seen a demo, but whether they'll be able to get this game out eventually remains to be seen. In Occupy Mars, you'll be trying to survive on the hostile red planet, whether it be in single player or co-op. 
And based on what I'm seeing, I think the co-op factor would be really interesting. You'll be building a base, mining, you need to get water, you need to generate oxygen, and of course you'll need to get food in order to survive on the hostile surface of Mars. Based on what I've seen, temperature could be a really important factor because not every site on Mars is going to have a steady temperature. Seeing as your base, early on at least, could be highly reliant on solar energy, where you put up your base and how that's going to affect the day-night cycle, which according to the game itself is realistic, is also going to determine how much power you're able to generate. You won't have to do it alone. You'll have vehicles to help you. Um, the robo-dog that we've just seen. I'm not sure if that's actually in the game already, if it's coming later, but having a robotic companion like this should make for at least a bit more of a lively situation on Mars. Now again, I don't know exactly when this is coming out, because the devs seem to be a bit skittish with giving out information about the game, but what we've been seeing from it so far does make me very interested in playing this when it eventually comes out. A title that will take the survival genre to new heights is Forever Skies, as ideally you will not touch the ground. You are aboard an airship. The situation is that toxic dust storms are everywhere below you. Your high-tech airship, which is also serving as your mobile base, you can expand this as you see fit, is your way of getting around. Whereas normally in survival games you mine resources on the ground, at this point you mine them from above slash from the air itself. The buildings that you maneuver your airship around are up for grabs, both in the form of exploring such a rooftop and trying to find any useful resources, or by simply taking buildings apart, such as old cranes, which are no longer in use. All of these can yield you both new items, allow you to craft new things, and of course to allow you to expand your airship further, increasing your chances of survival. River Skies is a dev team that's also worked on games like Dying Light, Divinity Original Sin, and the League of Legends series. The way they use a mobile airship as a base is quite novel. It is something I have not yet encountered in a survival game. Of course, you could make the point that something like Space Engineers does this, but it doesn't quite do it like this. Whereas the game was initially planned to only have single player, the devs have confirmed that a co-op mode is also in the works. Seeing as the game is coming out into early access, this might mean that co-op is not going to be included in the first version, but it will come later. The final game to keep an eye on is Sons of the Forest. This is essentially the sequel to The Forest. It all starts out fairly easily. You're in your nice little helicopter, trying to find a missing billionaire on a remote island. But soon, this goes completely awry and you find yourself trying to survive. Alone. That is, if you're not playing co-op. The enemy is going to be cannibals slash mutants. Whatever you're about to come across is not quite human. And it is also not quite friendly. Now, interestingly, in the forest or Sons of the Forest, there are no real indicators for what you are supposed to do next. The game as it says itself, doesn't have NPCs which tell you what to do. There are no real quest markers or any kind. You decide what you want to do next. You decide how you want to survive next and where you want to build your base. Because you get complete freedom on how to survive, how to play, how to build. Um, this is, however, impacted by seasons because the seasons indicate how much food there is going to be available. How many berries will be available in spring is going to vary greatly from how many berries will be available in winter. Now, all of this is running on the Unreal Engine 5, which looks in this trailer absolutely spectacular. I don't know what sort of hardware we're going to need for this, but it looks really, really good. And I hope that the actual game ends up looking exactly like this. It is probably not a game for the faint of heart. It is a survival horror game, 
which means that it might be um, a bit scary at times. So if that's not for you, then please check out any of the other games that you can find in this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any or several games that you think are interesting, then it always helps out the developers if you wishlist it, because that allows them to be found easier on Steam as the more people do this. So go to the description, click on any of the game links that you think are interesting and add them to your wishlist so you can keep up to date with them and eventually play them when they become available. What other survival games are there worth to check out? Let me know down below in the comments. Let me know what other games you are looking forward to. Because there are definitely games that I didn't know about that maybe should have made it into the video. So by all means, let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and good luck surviving whatever it is that you are currently going through or will be going through in any of these games.